Within this video, we will be discussing the progression of moral development of children and young adults through schools and how their age and life expectancies and physical activity can affect how they morally progress. Moral development could be described as the growth of cognitive ability, such as grasping understandings of right versus wrong, as well as development of personality traits and behavioral patterns. These types of developments often occur through experiences, such as interactions with peers and the environment. The most critical period of moral development happens in childhood, as this is when more social and environmental changes begin to happen. Moral development is extremely important, especially in childhood. As mentioned before, moral development causes growth and cognitive ability, this including children's abilities to connect actions with outcomes, such as stealing with a negative consequence. Moral development in childhood also helps to shape that child's attitudes and personality. Through the experiences of different situations, children can gain their own understanding and attitude about certain things including their own capabilities physically, emotionally, and socially. Moral development allows children to shape their personalities as well based on their own experiences and gain confidence in that aspect. These factors of moral growth and development are very important in regards to future obstacles that many children will eventually go through as they age. In an article evaluating high school athletes' perspectives on character development through sport participation, 20 student athletes were interviewed about their views on sport participation and how it relates to their development outside of that sport. The study found the majority of athletes to believe character to be what develops most with sports, as well as sportsmanship. This suggests that more character building lessons should be implemented into lessons by coaches. According to Kohlberg's theory, moral development is associated with cognitive development. Kohlberg proposed a model based on three levels of moral development that a child goes through, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. Each of these levels includes two separate stages. People can only pass through these levels in the order listed. The pre-conventional level is typically children nine years of age and younger, and it states that our moral code is shaped by the standards of adults and the consequences of following or breaking the rules. Stage one is obedience and punishment orientation. The child or individual is good in order to avoid being punished. If a person is punished, they must have done something wrong. Stage two, individualism and exchange. At this stage, children recognize that there is not just one right view that is handed down by the authorities. Different individuals have different viewpoints. At the conventional level, which would be most adolescents and adults, we begin to internalize the moral standards of valued adult role models. Authority is internalized but not questioned, and reasoning is based on the norms of the group to which the person belongs. Stage 3 is good interpersonal relationships. The child or individual is good in order to be seen as being a good person by others. Therefore, answers relate to the approval of others. And stage four, maintaining the social order. The child or individual becomes aware of the wider rules of society, so judgments concern obeying the rules in order to uphold the law and to avoid guilt. The third and final level is post-conventional. Individual judgment is based on self-chosen principles and moral reasoning is based on individual rights and justice. According to Kohlberg, this level of moral reasoning is as far as most people get. Stage 5, social contract and individual rights. The child or individual becomes aware that while rules and laws might exist for the good of the greatest number, there are times that they will work against the interests of particular individuals. Stage 6 is universal principles. People at this stage have developed their own set of moral guidelines which may or may not fit the law. The principles apply to everyone. If coaches and teachers can apply Kohlberg's theory to their knowledge, they can incorporate it in the way they teach and coach. If they know children go through these stages, they can understand how important it is to teach good moral behavior. A good way to teach this is through the hand of fair play. The most popular theory on moral development is the social learning theory. This theory states that socialization promotes moral development. Socialization occurs through social processes such as modeling, rewards and punishments, and reinforcements that teach students to behave morally. 
This is the theory that PE teachers have traditionally used in their classes to promote moral development. The structural development theory states that students can structure their thoughts and behaviors in a moral way in PE and sports. This is done through their ability to reason or make sense of the rules, norms, and expectations of the sport or activity. The structural development theory ultimately says that the more that an individual can reason or make sense of things, the higher their morals. This is seen in sports and PE classes. As children grow up and have more structured thought processes regarding the rules and expectations, the more developed their morals tend to be. This is where Kohlberg's theory falls. Taking the structural development theory one step further, there is the interactional morality theory. The interactional morality theory focuses on how the environment plays a role in the individual's reasoning. This theory states that morals are developed through an individual's ability to reason within social contexts. In short, development of morals depends on the individual's ability to interact with their environment and the others in it. In 1831, PE teachers made a plea for character development to be included as a component in the PE curriculum. In 1983, over 150 years later, the American Academy of Fiscal Education made a statement that agreed that moral development is crucial in PE. Research indicates that moral development can be promoted in a PE setting, but it is not an automatic result of participation in PE. This means that suitably trained PE teachers must incorporate strategies into their curriculum. One strategy would be addressing the moral implications of students' behaviors as they arise in class and by deliberately implementing moral dilemmas into the class. A second strategy would be to allow students to create their own activities and drills. This would prompt students to discuss with one another and to reach agreements. A third strategy would be PE teachers using positive reinforcement and modeling to help children learn appropriate behaviors. I'm going to be kind with my big heart. If I do that, we're going to have fun. So stand up. We're gonna do that one more time. I can be successful. I can be successful. Here's how. Here's how. I'm going to listen, going to listen. with my big ears. So I'm going to try for the it. first couple of days and just in general, I believe that students learn best by doing it. So I try to have the activities mirror what the expectation is. <laughs> Stacy Lair and I have been a PE teacher for 24 years and I have taught all levels elementary through high school. Have you ever had an instance in which you actively tried to incorporate scenarios that help your students develop their moral development? Um, situations where things were made unfair or anything just so they can learn from them? I don't think I've strategically made things unfair so they could learn from them because it happens all the time because life is fair. And so sometimes um, things occur in class. Actually, it happens all the time. I teach elementary um, now and it happens all the time. And then I use those moments as a teaching moment. I stop what we're doing and I explain, okay, well, what's good sportsmanship? Or now this person um, got upset because this happened, but we're all just learning this new activity or game. So should we get upset? And we always talk. Sometimes I foresee things that are going to happen, especially with the younger um, elementary grades, like K through two, um, and their maturity level isn't there as much. And so um, like picking colors of scooters, um, sometimes Sometimes I just hand them out, but I like them to be able to choose their color that they would like. But then prior to that, for the little ones, I, they always there's always somebody that cries or gets upset because they didn't get the color they wanted. So we talk through that ahead of time. Like, well, what happens if you're really hoping to get a certain color and when you get up to choose, that color's all gone? Well, you know, do you cry or do you get mad? Well, no, you just pick a new color. Yeah, we just pick a different color. You pick your second choice. Things like that that are always like developing 
good character and being fair and sportsmanship and stuff like that. How do you approach conflicts that come up in class? If it's between two children, um, we take them, I mean, I, they, I take them aside over by me and we talk about it. I let each side tell their story. Um, we talk about what happened or maybe I saw something happen and we talk about how, what, what, what we could do different. Um, sometimes I ask them to apologize. Do you think this is something you should apologize for? A lot of times little elementary kids, they, um, if something happens by accident, they don't think they should have to apologize for it. And so we talk through that. Well, if it happens by accident or on purpose, you still need to say sorry and check to see if the person's okay and, and say, oh, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean for that to happen, things like that. So we talk kind of one-on-one -on -one with kids. If, it's, if I notice something's going on with a game or an activity that um, just isn't going right or there's just conflict or maybe I didn't teach something right or for some reason this class is doing something weird um, or just off, then we stop and we'll talk through it as a group. Do you have any strategies where you discuss moral development with your students? So um, like any certain things that you like to make sure to incorporate? I know you said that you talk um, through different scenarios, but. Yeah, like cho um, we talk about choosing partners. Um, I have a whole, we have a whole lesson, bunch of lessons just on choosing partners and getting in groups and uh, partnering and grouping and what do you do if you're a leftover and what do you do if you notice somebody is leftover we have an odd number will you invite them to your group and so um, I would say that that's moral and character development um, and, you, and then we talk about I try to like um, make it pertain to their regular life so what happens if um, you notice that there's one person left over or an odd number um, at recess could you invite them to play? Well, yeah, we could do that there, we, you know, or at lunch or just different things like that. So I try to incorporate, I feel like I teach more of that than I do actual games and activities because we're learning how to get along in different situations and, um, and they apply to, re there's always a lot of conflict in elementary schools at recess time. So I always try to, you know, what could you do if that happened at recess or if that happened in your class or with friends or so we do, I do try to do things like that. Um, we also talk about like, we don't always do winning and losing things, but I do incorporate that and we do learn about that. And then we talk about um, saying good game to the other team and clapping for our own team. We can be happy when we win, but we, we don't boast or brag and we talk about what that means or what that looks like and what should we do instead. Um, shake hands or we do like the high five lines that, that you do at the end of like a soccer or a hockey game. Do you think physical activity in sports can cause poor character development such as aggression? Um, yeah, you know, I do depending on who the, the adults are leading. Um, I don't think the kids naturally would be aggressive and things like that. Um, I think it's kind of a learned behavior. So if you have adults facilitating positive sportsmanship and being assertive versus aggressive and, um, you know, not if you notice somebody being a ball hog or things like that or not sharing, um, or, you know, not passing to their teammates, things like that, that's something that a coach or the facilitator or teacher needs to teach and watch for. And if you have adults in charge that don't really teach that stuff, then, and just let it go on and kind of turn a blind, blind eye to it, then, then, then it can happen. So I think it's, you know, up to the adults in charge to monitor that. I don't think it's a very often situation, but I do think it can, again, with the aggressiveness, like you said, like sports, football, hockey, just those main aggressive sports can cause it. I think it's rare though. But one that I can see happening more often is the cockiness. Guys will get, you know, do score well, score a goal, score a touchdown in football or anything like that. That could result in cockiness, but if they're not able to shut that off when they leave the field or not able to moderate the way that it should be, that's when it becomes an issue. A PE teacher acts to introduce children to sports and the aspects of sports. In this sense, it is important for the PE teacher to express their views on cheating, 
dangerous play, and unacceptable behaviors from which their students can learn acceptable and appropriate behaviors. PE teachers also act as leaders of discussions in their classes. They can take advantage of situations that arise in the class to prompt class discussions and student learning. Having good morals can really contribute to a positive team atmosphere. Saying good job, congratulating a team member when they did something well, being a good sport, and knowing how to handle your emotions and thoughts, knowing your self-worth and your teammates' self-worth, standing up for yourself in a healthy way, knowing how to effectively learn from others will help a team overall and create a positive team atmosphere. One of the biggest things for me has been with my motivation, especially. So like motivation kind of ties in, especially into like teamwork, um, time management and all that. Without the motivation to get like, even with talking about like specifically since I played football and specifically that you have to be motivated to get what you want to get done. And so my motivation is kind of like that's driven from on the field is motivating, get your play done, executed, everything done the right way. And now you take that to off the field, motivated, get your work done, get you get you going to the next step, whether it be into your job or the workforce or how, however your next step is in life, that motivation that you've taken from the sports transfers over in every day. Even now being into a college student, the like the time management, which is honestly one of the biggest thing and the motivation to get your stuff done, that time management, you know, going to class, and then doing homework and then trying to balance out your social life, which is another important skill that I've learned, but your social life and just into other responsibilities, whether you may have your job or whatever else, is significantly important. And that's something with or without sports that you've had to use. So what does all this mean? Throughout watching this video, I hope you learn that physical activity has a pretty big impact on moral development. But why is this important? Why should people even care about this topic? In this video, we went into depth about how physical activity shapes some pretty important key traits, such as character, good sportsmanship, personality, and attitude. Teaching these characteristics to children at a young age through physical activity and sports helps build them into the type of person they will be when they are older, and serves as building blocks for their personality and morality. Everything was falling through that air.